Hey, it's me, Tim. This video is a little bit different than some of the ones I've been putting up recently. I'm going to make this privacy screen out of, you guessed it, holocord doors. And uh, so I guess it makes it a lot like my videos. But um, I made it on the MakerMaid CNC, and this video was sponsored by MakerMaid CNC. Um, if you don't know what that is, it's the 4 foot by 8 foot CNC machine that you can buy for 500 bucks. It hangs vertically instead of like tabletop. Um, and it gets a bit of a bad rep on the internet because I think people are unfairly comparing it to other things. And so this video is really going to focus more on my experience with that machine, um, the, the problems I had with it, as well as the solutions I came up with, and how I learned and figured out to make these panels on it. You'll learn how I made the panels in the process as well, but it's really about the machine. There's another video that I'm putting up along with this uh, that's all about how I dismantle hollow core doors, because I've got a bit of a system down now, I've done so many, to try and show you how you can pretty easily and effectively get usable material out of these doors. So I would invite you to please go watch that as well. This video is going to start with the doors already disassembled because there's a lot to cover. So let's begin. Well, this came off easy. Yeah. My son Vance helped me take apart some doors that I used on another project and we were really inspired by this one particular door which was the catalyst for the design of this project. I love the uh, the way it's like a honeycomb pattern, but it's sort of very organic and squish. Kind of takes some influence from this in future builds. I used VCarve Pro by Vectric to make this design, and I started by just finding a simple honeycomb shape online, converting it to a vector, and then using the Vectrix uh, distort tool to experiment with sort of bending the shape to make it kind of get squished in, in and out. And I did a lot of experimenting with this until I finally settled on a design that I liked. So now I'm ready to cut. My shop didn't have space to put this in the main part, so I put it in my storage bay and I built it up on wheels so I can easily move it around and I'm going to turn that cart into wood storage as well. I just am still working on it. Um, I started my file in the center, I simply found the centers of the doors and then I attached them to the wasteboard. But I didn't just put them on the rest of the bottom, I sort of shimmed it up a little bit before I put it down and we'll talk more about that later. I didn't film building the machine or any of the software work that I did, but there's plenty of stuff online about that in the forums. I'll leave links below. And uh, they're always improving the information that they give out there. So since I've built this, the instructions have become more clear and concise. The software I'm using to control the machine is called Ground Control, and it's free and open source. It's a little bit different than other types of CNC control software that I've used before, but it's adequate. Um, you just kind of have to learn how it works. Now we get to see the machine move, which is exciting, and uh, the first thing you'll notice is that it's not fast. It's not as fast as a regular benchtop machine. It works differently. Uh, but here's where I really want to stress a point where I feel like this machine gets a bad rep. People look at it and they say, oh, well, it's hanging from ropes and it can't work right and it's slow and it's inaccurate and stuff. But think about it for a minute. Of course it can't compete with a $10,000 machine. It's a $500 machine. If you want to start a factory, you're not going to buy this. But if you want to start into CNC in your garage and you have 500 bucks, here's an opportunity. And there are very few other opportunities anywhere close to this price range, especially in this size. If you set realistic expectations for what this machine can do, it, I've already found, exceeds what I expected. Probably the slowest part of it right now is the Z-axis, but I know that MakerMade CNC is working on a new motor to speed the Z-axis process up. Here we're seeing in real time as the bit goes down. But now, with the camera up close and we're not looking at the size and scale of the machine and seeing it up close, it's not that much slower than a regular CNC machine. It's just slower. So, because the Z-axis is so slow, I wanted to limit my amount of time that I had to go up and down. Uh, I put only one tab on each cutout instead of two or three like I would normally do for something these sizes um, because I was hoping that would just speed the file process up and as you can see some of them fall out and I had some problems because of that. So that was on me for not setting up proper tabs. This was my first cut and there were some problems with the G code where it wasn't as um, efficient as it could be and then it went and it cut the frame out first. I went and I fixed all that 
in uh, later iterations, but there's also a problem I had with the machine, which we're going to talk about in a little bit. Right now I'm showing it at super fast speed, and this whole process to cut this whole panel took less than two hours, but I think about 90 minutes is what it came out to to cut a panel. Once I fixed my file and made it more efficient, it was a little bit faster than that. Maybe I had too much faith in the machine and I had other stuff to do, so I didn't stand and babysit it, but I did notice I had some flaws happening in one corner. You can see this is actually a different panel than the one we are just cutting. It's finishing to cut it out, but if you look at that arrow in the top right corner, see how it's a little curled? That is where my problem was. I put a screw up there so I could just hang that router mount out of the way and, and adjust my board without having to disconnect it. Works really well. Let's take a quick minute to talk about how this machine works and the problem that I ran into which is coming up and how I solved it. It's basically very simple and it works just like every other CNC machine. There are a couple motors, there's one in each corner and then there's also one right on the router itself that control the direction and the speed. So the two motors in the corners have a gear, the chain goes over the gear and it gets longer on one side, shorter on the other, it goes this way, etc. and it goes up and down. The third motor that's on the router controls the depth of the cutter and it has about an inch and a half worth of travel going up and down that way. And that's just the basic setup. You can obviously get more creative and, and modify this thing as you go. So here's what was happening to me. See how that chain is sort of going up off the gear a little bit? It actually slipped a tooth more than once on me. And if that happens, all your math measurements are off. So I started by experimenting with how I could sort of set a guide up and I glued that little piece of wood there which worked as a finger to sort of push the chain back down onto the gear and you can see some other guides that I have set up to sort of guide the chain which were a bad idea and we'll talk about it later but so every time it slipped a gear now all my math would be off and that's obviously a problem the finger worked so I made a better one by welding a bolt to a washer and sliding it onto a screw mount that holds the motor in place and I put one on the top and bottom to sort of guide the chain and I figured okay problem solved but then this happened and my guides didn't save the day. So the chain was just sort of sticking in this one particular area the most. You can see I marked it with red ink. You can kind of see the ink there a little bit uh, and that was like the worst spot that seemed to catch over and over again. At this point I turned the router off and I was just driving the machine back and forth to see where I was having these problems and started adding liberal amounts of oil to the chain wherever it was sticking. And uh, that seemed to do it. I guess I just really needed to grease the chain. So that made me realize that as these things get used and get dried out and get sawdust in them, they're going to need to be maintained. Um, perhaps a dust cover on that would help. I don't think so because there's so much chain exposed. But so that's something that needs to be taken care of. You need to make sure your chain is fully functioning and, and clean. You can see it's still grabbing a little bit there. I might add a bunch of gear oil to the actual gear on the machine as well or even file those teeth down a tiny bit just to make sure that they don't stick to the chain. But once I got a bunch of grease on that, uh, that solved all my problems that I was having with miscalculations and errors. Except, see how the chain is actually going over those screws in the nail? That's changing the math of it, it's shortening the chains. So I remove those and I move the, the edge guide over further so it wouldn't actually be in the way when the chain was under tension as you can see in these photos. That's what it looks like there now. There are also these like elasticy strings that kind of hold the chain up when there's excess um, and keeps it from hanging into the board. You can see that gear I painted yellow because every time I dropped it, it was hard to find. Um, you need to make sure that that all stays clear and doesn't get bound up or tangled up or anything. So make sure everything's round and really set that all up well. The best way to do it is to run the CNC, the length of the machine up and down and just watch what happens. I found some minor issues with depth accuracy. Again, the Z-axis is kind of the weakest link in this machine right now. So sometimes it would cut all the way through and then other times it wouldn't. I don't really know why yet. It could have been me, who knows. Um, but now it's basically a, a woodworking video. I did the old infill on the letters, I sanded it all out, and I cleaned up those edges a little bit. I could have done better, but I really, 
<laughs> I got bored and I gave up. Um, I took a piece of sandpaper uh, around a popsicle stick. And if I had a sharper bit when I was doing this, I would have had a cleaner edge. But the, the eighth inch bit that I used to cut them all was kind of dull. If you watch my other video about breaking down these doors, you'll see that these are the trim pieces that go the length of the door up and down. So I'm using those to create a frame around my panels. I cut a slot through them the width of my saw blade twice, and that gave a little bit of breathing room for the eighth inch plywood that I was going to put in. And I simply set the fence up just a little bit off center so I could run the board down each direction to get my slightly wider slot. There you can see the slot and I do a little test fit with a cutoff before I do the rest of them. It fits perfect. I just did mitered corners and I'll show you how I reinforced them a little bit further on, but I was thinking about it as I was prepping these pieces of wood that there were some holes from where the doorknob, the bolt, would go through that I thought would be a structural issue. So I decided to plug them. And I didn't have any dowels that were the right size, but I did have this piece of a croquet set that was close. So I just took a little bit off of that and filled those, those holes real quick to give that piece of wood structure. There's hardly anything there keeping them up. I knew these miters would be weak and it would be a little tricky to put all this sort of thin, flexible stuff together. So I did a pretty consistent dry fit and I really clamped it up good, made sure everything was going to line up before trying to glue. I knew that the glue wouldn't hold well and uh, it was a little tricky to clamp because it was so small so I added a couple staples to it um, and that helped set it up. And then once the glue set I pulled some chopsticks out because everybody has chopsticks that they're not going to use and those make perfect dowels. This helped give the corner a little bit of structure and stability. You'll remember when I cut the panels out on the Maker Made CNC, I had some trim that was left around the edge, and that you might have been thinking, look at all that waste, but it's not waste. I used those pieces to cut strips that I would face the front of the frame with. I used contractor glue for some reason when I did this, and um, I don't know why. I should have used wood glue. It took forever for these things to dry. I found this stuff on eBay, which was a bit of less expensive than rice paper, and it seemed like it had the right vibe. little spray glue was all I needed to adhere the paper to the wood and um, after I rolled it all out I started to sort of cut the edge evenly but it was tearing on me um, because it is just so delicate and fragile so I didn't bother I figured it was a backside no one would see it I just left it I took three sets of hinges to connect the four panels, and don't forget that the hinges in the middle of it had to be the opposite direction than you would normally put them so it would all close up together like an accordion. I'll use these when I do guitar shows as well as in this part of my shop where I try to do photography and uh, whatnot. Um, instead of those big heavy walls that I had made years and years ago from an old cedar fence, this thing weighs virtually nothing. You can carry it under your arm. And uh, I do have to be a little careful with it though because it's a lot more fragile, all that paper. But uh, I think it looks way cooler. And it can be backlit with uh, white like I have now or any other color uh, to really make it pop at the shows.
There's a couple other things that you'll need to think about with this machine too. Um, it is technically a four foot by eight foot cutting area and it can cut all the way in those areas, but it does run into some issues around the edge for accuracy and reliability. And there's a couple things, like for instance, if it comes down too low, this plate can hit where this two by four sticks out, my little ledge that I have for placing my sheet goods on. Or if it comes too far to this edge and the weight gets off, it could tilt like this and then that will screw everything up. So you can see how this four foot by eight foot area really becomes practically speaking more like a three and a half foot by seven foot area. Now, there are solutions to that, and that's what's so cool about this system, is that this is like a kind of build-it-yourself type of kit. You could simply extend the top bar that holds the, um, the motors, put the motors further out, make a larger bed, and um, maybe even get away with the chain that's already here, you might need a slightly longer chain, but you could extend this thing to make it cut 10, 20, 30 feet, whatever you want to do. The software can figure it out, it's just a matter of making the mechanics right. Um, and then there was this, I heard about a guy from Maker Made People that has a hole cut out in his so he can put thicker stuff in and then bring it up as he needs it. Sky's the limit. It's your machine and you can do what you want to do. Once you figure it out, once you go through all the futzing around that I just went through, you'll understand it and you'll know what to do to make it work for you. Another thing I thought would be cool would be to hang it from the ceiling so you could just like flip it up. Let me do a quick recap, and I also want to let some of you know who may not know me or who I am. Um, I do these endorsed videos on my channel, but I do them on my own terms and sparingly. I will not promote a product that I do not believe in or use myself. Um, and I will be honest with you, when uh, Maker Made first contacted me about this, I was hesitant. And at first, after like I first got it set up and I was having those difficulties, there was a point in time where I was like, you know what, I'm not going to do this. But then I figured it out. And I'm so glad I persevered, and I'm so glad that I did, and that's why I'm here proudly sponsoring this product in this video today. Is it going to compete with the $10,000 machine? No, it's not supposed to. It's an amazing machine, and value for dollar, I don't think it can be beat. So if you have a machine that costs less, that does more, send it to me, and I'll tell you if it beats this. <laughs> okay. Uh, so thank you very much, MakerMate CNC, for, for putting up with me and for sponsoring this video, and I'm looking forward to doing more with you on this channel, so stay tuned to that. Plus, they gave you my own coupon code over at MakerMadeCNC.com, and if you type in TimSway15, you'll get 15% off your purchase plus free shipping, which is pretty awesome. And that's good for the rest of 2019, although there are times that they have sales that are even better than that, and so obviously use that when that's around. And um, I want to thank you very much again for watching. Please feel free to ask any questions you can in the comments, and I will do my best to answer them honestly, because that's what I do. And if you're looking for more information, I highly recommend going to the Maslow forums. I'll put a link in the description below. And that's where people who have a lot more time into these machines and know a lot more about them, communicate and share. So it's, uh, it's pretty cool, man. Open source is interesting. I dig it. I hope you dig it too. Be good.